Welcome back to the anime and manga news for the week ending December 14th, 2019. Beginning with, it seems all the protests surrounding pirated manga and other materials is paying off. A bill to revise Japan's copyright laws is in the works for next year. The Japanese Agency for Cultural Affairs has been working on proposed revisions concerning the downloading of illegal media from the internet. Now, the agency's original proposition was revealed in February, long time ago, and called for a ban on deliberately downloading any kind of illegal media online. Current laws only, publish consume, only punish consumers punish if the pirated media is music or video, so the new plan would expand the scope of current laws. However, this idea was met with criticism, arguing that the regulations were too broad and would limit internet users' freedom of expression. Technically, you couldn't download you know, a single frame of a manga for a wallpaper or whatever. The plan has been revised since then, and a committee, committee of experts met at the end of November to discuss the new plan. The committee included manga creator Ken Akamatsu, along with publisher, public relations managers, copyright scholars and lawyers, and representatives from organizations that work to protect freedom of expression. So, nice range there. They discussed making changes like allowing screenshots of works or downloading a certain number of manga panels. The agency also plans to further discuss whether the download of original works and the act of downloading from piracy sites will be illegal. They hope to finalize the bill by January and submit it to the Japanese Diet sometime in early 2020. So, who knows, but interesting to see that changing around a little bit. The Tokyo Metropolitan Police arrested a woman on Tuesday for allegedly threatening the retail store chain Animate. According to police, the woman sent a string of death threats to the store via email, referen referencing Kyo Annie's tragedy, and telling the staff at Animate that they should, quote, prepare to die at any moment, end quote. She is officially suspected of forcible obstruction of business and interfering with the company's security. The suspect was apparently banned from Animate's online service back in September 2018 after repeatedly making and canceling orders. The investigation reports that she admitted to that charge, saying that she was angry with the company's response. Yes, online shopping can be frustrating, but this is definitely not the appropriate response. Now, that said, good job to the authorities taking action, and let's hope for the continued safety of businesses and studios in Japan and everywhere. Um, let's just hope everything stays... Just don't do this, please. Meanwhile, anime studio Kinema Citrus Company announced on Wednesday that Bushi Road and Kadokawa have each acquired about a third of the studio's shares. Each company now holds 31.8% of the company's shares, with the studio's representative director holding the remaining 36.4% controlling stake. They noted in the announcement that the new arrangement will allow the three companies to more securely and confidently develop globally targeted intellectual property, i.e. anime franchises and such. Kinema Citrus is Citrus, excuse me, is known in recent years for its productions of Made in Abyss and Rising of the Shield Hero, along with the anime adaptation of Bushi Road's Review Starlight franchise. If you haven't watched the first episode of that, that is bonkers. The three companies had previously announced a partnership in July with the aim of producing a stable intellectual property and producing anime in response to its growing popularity, both abroad and domestically. So Hopefully some interesting things will come out of that. Now, this week also brings several, no, many, many new anime announcements. Ready? Here we go. First up, Tsuburaya Productions and publisher Pony Canyon revealed today that Studio Trigger, that's right, will be animating a new anime project in the Gridman universe. The new anime will be titled SSSS Dinazanon, and brings back director Akira Amamiya and other main staff members from the original SSSS Gridman anime series, which premiered in October 2018. That's probably the wrong way to pronounce it. The format of the new project has not yet been announced, so watch out for more details. But a teaser video is up on Pony Canyon's YouTube channel, so 
check that out if you're interested. Public uh, broadcaster NHK has announced that it will be producing a new sports anime focusing on para-athletes. The new show, titled Breakers, will premiere on January 7th as part of the channel's Tensai TV Kunyu educational program. It will tell four stories about four different sports, wheelchair basketball, track and high jump, goal ball, and Paralympic swimming. The main educational program will also feature guest stars associated with the actual sports, which makes sense, NHK being very much a public television kind of a thing. This will hopefully be a great new view of sports anime, so keep an eye out for that next month if you are interested. Uh, multimedia project Idly Pride, I'm sorry, I cannot say that name with a straight face, announced on Monday that the franchise is getting a TV anime adaptation under Cyber Agent's new CA Animation label. CA Animation was formed in October 2018, and this anime will be its first project. The story focuses on, of course, idol groups. The project's promotional material reads, quote, No one starts from the spotlight. They all start as nobody. Only way there is to prove that she is a true idol, end quote. I guess we'll have to watch and find out what being a true idol really involves. I suspect it's singing and dancing. More information on the anime will be revealed in March. The larger multimedia project is planned to include video games, music, and several other forms of entertainment along with the anime. So basically the Idol Master Love Alive structure. We all, we all get it. All right. Uh, the official Twitter account for Sosuke Toka's manga Osama Ranking, or King Ranking, revealed that the manga is receiving an anime adaptation. The web manga tells the coming-of-age story of Boji, the firstborn prince of his kingdom, who is deaf and powerless. He tries hard and dreams of becoming the world's greatest king, but people whisper behind his back that he is good for nothing and could never be a king. So, pretty dark stuff there. The story begins with Boji making his first friend, Kage, a literal shadow who was a member of the now-extinct Kage clan of assassins, and then follows his journey of meeting people and growing up. Okay. <clears throat> uh, manga creator Hidekichi Matsumoto announced this week that her manga Inu to Neko Dojimo Kateru to Mainichi Tanoshi, or I Enjoy Raising Both a Dog and a Cat Every Day, is getting its own anime adaptation. The essay manga began as illustrated anecdotes posted on Twitter and tells the story of Matsumoto's daily life, raising a sweet and innocent dog and a devilishly vicious yet adorable cat. So basically like that stuff from Sinfest, right? Um, uh, meanwhile, yesterday's issue of Shogakukan's monthly Koro Koro Comics announced an anime adaptation for Sakuya Kuroda's Rich Police Cash manga. As you might have guessed from the title, the story follows Rich Policeman Cash, who solves any and every problem with the power of money. Hopefully this is framed as a what-not-to-do type of story. Uh, the new comic anime is set to premiere on the Koro Koro YouTube channel on January 15th, so I'm assuming these are short episodes, sort of web animation style. Finally, Nintendo revealed today that Studio Colorido is producing a series of animated shorts based on the new Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield games. The anime, titled Pokemon Twilight Wings, will consist of seven five-minute long episodes. The first episode is set to debut on YouTube on January 15th, with new episodes airing monthly afterwards. The Pokemon Company International describes the ensemble drama series, saying, quote, Over the span of seven episodes, Pokemon Twilight Wings will show in detail the dreams of Galar's residents, the realities they face, the challenges they must overcome, and the conflicts they must resolve, end quote. Uh, Studio Colorido, uh, uh, known for a lot of short films, particularly the McDonald's anime, uh, anime commercials. The upcoming Type Moon Museum Tracing 15 Years of Type Moon exhibit has revealed details of its contents this week. Part of this year's 15th anniversary celebration of Fate Stay Night, the museum will run from December 20th through April 5th at the Sony Music Roppongi Museum. 
the exhibit will be divided into seven areas, and yes, I'm going to list them all. Area one, the face of type moon, a recreation of creator Kinoko, Nasu, Kinoko Nasu's workspace, as well as office and desk spaces at type moon. Area two, type moon's history, as shown through production materials, presumably like cells and such. Area three, how to make fate stay night, a breakdown of the visual novel's characters, videos, soundtrack, and direction. <gasps> yep. Uh, area four, gallery type moon, which is, you guessed it, a gallery of illustrations from type moon's various works. Not done yet. Area five, type moon and our era, a showcase of works derived from the setting of the original Fate Stay Night. The many, many works derived from it. Area 6, Fuyuki City Day and Nightmare, a 13-meter map and diorama depicting Fate's Fuyuki City. And Area 7, a carnival phantasm, a showcase of magazine covers featuring Type Moon characters and messages of support from various people related to the franchise. Congratulations, <laughs> that said, to Type Moon on the anniversary, and here's to many more years of many more Fate series, and I'm sure we will have many more Fate series. And lastly, speaking of, our fun bit of news for the week, the Japan Racing Association has launched another wild anime collaboration, this time with the characters of Fate Grand Order. In the new collab, the main characters of the new TV anime series travel back in time to observe and commentate past Arima Kinen horse races. Because why not? <clears throat> the interactive website is titled, get ready for this, Fate Grand Prix Order Absolute Horse Racing Front Arimania. The associated Fate's, Fate anime title's full title is Fate Grand Order Absolute Demonic Front Babylonia, so you can see where the collaboration got its little name. Visitors to the site can ray shift to a randomly selected Arima Kinen race. Footage from the historical race is then shown, along with commentary from one of eight main characters from the anime. Afterwards, you'll receive an explanation about the race, which isn't the commentary for that, and the opportunity to share your findings on Twitter and be entered into a prize drawing, with possible prizes including a signed poster, a phone case, and other kinds of collab-specific art. So, you know, if you've ever wanted to listen to Gilgamesh in Kidu or Ishtar give commentary on a horse race, check out the website. And let's be real, even if you never wanted that before, you probably do now. That's the news for this week. Thank you all. See you next week.